Hello everyone, I'm Larry Ayila. This is the Art and Proud African LGBTI YouTube channel. This afternoon, uh, I'm at uh, Regent's Park once again with my friends. Can you please introduce yourself to our viewers? My name is Dauda Adewale. Yeah. I'm from Nigeria, or your state precisely. It's nice having you. Thank you. And I'm Joel, Joel Morty, and I'm from Nigeria. Delta State precisely. It's really nice having <laughs> both of you. Thank you. Thank you for having Tell us. me, being a gay man from Nigeria, how has it been coming from Nigeria? Wow. That is the asked question though. Well, being a gay man in Nigeria is very hard. You know, you can't live your life freely. You can't be happy. You can't be who you are. You know, you'll be scared anytime you go out, you know, meeting some people or having a boyfriend in Nigeria. And if you're like BTM, a, a, what do I call it, someone that is feminine, you can't walk freely because people will be saying, look at him, homosexual. You are not allowed to be here. You are forbidden in this country, either, you know, by death or by 14 years in prison. Like me, I came from a Muslim family. My dad is an allergy. So, you know, in a Muslim culture, if they find out you are gay, either they stone you to death or they burn you to death. So I face a lot of challenges in Nigeria. I was like, God, is it my fault to be a gay man? Because anytime, every time, I always question God that, God, why me? Why me? I want to be, I want, I want, I want, I want to be me. I want to, I want to, I want to be free. It's not my fault, so it's very hard, it's very hard, but thank God I'm well, here. I can relate to you, I know where you're coming from. Yeah. Joel, Well, what's your my thing? perspective is quite, you know, different and um, of course a crema and two-spirit, but um, I wasn't really in the LGBT scene back in Nigeria. I traveled a lot, so when I was in the West, of course, you could be whoever I could be, whoever I wanted to be, but back in Nigeria, I kept, you know, busy and within family and friends they kind of like knew i guess but i was the elephant in the room no one wanted to you know, talk about you know why is joe different from you know his demeanor his voice his um sense of fashion you know and the things he's so heavily invested even enamored in so um yeah i remember my dad asking are you queer and you know all of that i'm like no because i've heard him you know to talk to his friends and you know they weren't really so and all of that so I'm like no I'm not but I do have LGBT friends and stuff you're like mm, okay um, you know so my, my, my experience was slightly you know quite different in you know as opposed to my LGBT brothers and sisters who are you know and again I was kind of like protected I come from a certain class so you don't really get to see all of those you know um, abuse and you know all of that infringement upon your right as a human being to exist um, so yeah, um, that's not until I did the first ever, you know, solo pride parade in Nigeria back in 2019. All right. And then I went to, you know, of course I explored Lagos, a city I love so much. And then of course Abuja, a place I know so well. And I could say I grew up in the National Assembly, um, but I'll not go too much detail in that. So that was where the law was made, the SSMPA. Right. So um, that was where we ended the Pride Parade. So when they saw all of, you know, those colors and stuff, I think through the CCTV, they knew something had happened. And that was how I became a person of interest. Okay. Um, along with my, you know, allies. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like my experience. So. Well, uh, we'll <laughs> go back to that okay. uh, Pride Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Before I ask that question, you are in the UK now, yeah. Ade. Yeah. What's your experience like? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy, very happy, because I work freely. I do whatever I like. I meet my LGBT people. I meet any gay, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I dress the way I want yeah. to be. Especially now that so. in Nigeria, I would just say, look at him, you're you you a man, but you're dressing like a woman. But now nobody can question me. Nobody can stop me. Nobody can call me a sort of names. No police or sex can even stop me. Let me see your phone, you know. Plus, I'm, I'm free and I'm happy. <laughs> Joel, yeah. you talked about um, organizing a solo pride mm. in 2019, and mm. you ended up at the National Assembly in Abuja. Absolutely. You talked about being a person of interest. Yeah. 
can you briefly tell us how did you become a person of interest? Um, well, um, it got to a point um, I was really tired, I was angry, I was um, angsty. When are we going to be free, liberated? Because um, I might be protected by a system, but I was fully aware of you know the other side of being protected. Yeah. You're targeted and yeah. you know all of that. So I kind of like, you know what, yeah, I've yeah. been to Pride in um, you know, America, New York, all of these places and even in London and you know all of But it's never really happened. It's never been the case in Nigeria. And when is this going to be, you know, when is it going to happen? Mm -hmm. So the whole idea was I called all of my friends, I'm really close knit, I'm close circle and I told them, listen, um, I'm thinking of, you know, um, coming out and then I had to really come up to them individually and they, they took it well right. um, yeah so most of them they already knew these All were right. people who I you know did high school you know with long-term friends um, most of them ladies though because they're more you know understanding and we've related over the years you know TV shows and all of that interest so um they were like yeah let's do this we're with you and you know all of that I never had one single LGBT friend in Nigeria which is really sad for you know someone who was born and raised in Nigeria yeah. and from from my TV years all of those in Nigeria and I really never you know had someone who I could you know relate to in a more you know same share. level yeah. coming from a dark place myself you know suicide and you know yeah. um a lot you know really really dark place in my younger years and of course even within your um you know upper echelon or you know being protected or all of that you still face bullying because I still remember my secondary school I was quite brilliant smart in school but even within that they were like oh you're peculiar you're you know bag and you know all of this stuff even though I never met any advance or anything towards anyone but they just assume and all of that so it was pain passion um love anger um it was a mix of different things hence why you know i was like it's time how long you know will i continue to you know so everything be damned um i love my family family is everything but um it was about me it was about me the individual job yeah. and we all get to that point where we have to exit this you know um temporary space called you know earth so um and again it's not as much as it's about me it's not only about me it's about the next generation do you want them to you know go through the same thing you went through as a child even yeah. though you were you know protected or mm. sheltered um so you, i'm very futuristic and you know all of that so i'm like okay um even if it's just one person um i'd save with this pride you know event um you know you might as well come out i came out to the most important people um you know had the course the conversation with siblings and you know um you know all of that and then they they were like somewhere in between oh it's okay it's okay and then friends oh it's fine um yeah but it was about you know that and then i love education so i started going doing research um what does the pride colors mean where do they come from yeah. who made them of course you're learning about stonewall riot and knowing about Marsha p you know johnson paid no mind johnson and you know rivera and all yeah. of these people who were in the front lines in the uprising back 52 something years ago um so yeah um and then i borrowed you know all of those strengths and of course mix it with that of my ancestors you yeah. know i'm African um, I went to the Fela liberation statue yeah. um, you know um, I, I went to different places and of course I went to a place I call the first LGBT bridge in Nigeria the Lekki Kuiling bridge because at right. night it becomes <clears throat> really peculiar yeah. you see the pride colors it comes there I'm like hmm, this place is for us you see so I went there um, and of course I challenged a religion which plays a huge huge part um you know it's played a huge part in the whole um antagonizing you know the LGBT know. people and all of that us um so i went to the national mosque um in abuja, abuja. and people were like oh my god and then of course i went to holy trinity like the big big place is in mitama um and of course the national assembly and of course the abuja city gates this is you know making it it's a normal thing you see quit hiding why are you hiding you love someone else it's a beautiful thing you see um they, they just made it you know um but then again i can understand and I, I went back into history and i knew where it came from i'm an unwilling karma yeah that's what i call myself <laughs> my story was written before i was born you know our um you know um laws are very parliamentarian they are very you know british so of course they are our colonials they came here and then they brought this thing before them we were yeah. there the two spirits were even revered 
Yeah. So I'm like, hmm. And now I'm back here. Hmm. You see? So, um, yeah. Um, knowing about the colors, I love colors. Um, the red life, um, the yellow, you know, sunlight, the green, um, nature. Yeah. And all of this. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I really um, educated myself. And it was fun when I started. And of course, knowing the rainbow flags and of course, understanding the trans flags, you know, um, the blue for boys, the traditional color for boys, yeah. the pink for girls, and, you know, in between exist the non uh, tra tra transitioning either from MTF, male to female, or FTM, female to male, and of yeah. course the non-binaries as well, and of course Monica Helms, who, you know, did the flags, you know, she um, did all of that, and then um, the same for, you know, um, our pride flag, yeah. the same for the bisexual flag, knowing the colors, the purple, and, the, you know, um, all of that, the blue, um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of challenging, you know, um, norms. Yeah, Yeah. that's good. It's nice sharing the, um, those experiences with us. Yeah. In spite of coming from an elitist family, mm -hmm. you seem to have some sort of protection. Yeah, I, do. I, I want to ask mm -hmm. about um, Adewale. Mm -hmm. How did you go about struggling to be accepted in the family? Yeah. First, my family doesn't accept me for who I am. Because when I was a little, like, let me say, like six years, I used to behave like a woman do anything woman does you know wear woman female clothes you know so my dad was like oh you allergy son you're not supposed to be like this because my large, my dad is a pusher allergy <coughs> he used to push in the mouth you know everybody knows my dad so it was like when you are my son allergy son and everybody knows you and you are, be, you are doing like this it's forbidden for a muslim culture so i was like ah there's nothing I can do but my mom was like because my mom loves me so much I was the last one of my mom so my mom used to say don't worry it will see change it will see just a gradual process so my mom took me to a different pastor for prayer afar you know sort of things like I don't want my son to be like this forever because I want my son to be a man not a woman so I faced a lot of challenges so when I started going up in my secondary school people like saying look at him he's a gay you know i was like ah, how am i going to do because i tried my best to to be to be a to, to be somebody else you know because be who i am was is a is a is a, is a, is a you know something for me the art thing for me so i couldn't feel happy so i was trying to be like a man but i tried so many times but it couldn't work so sometimes i just sit down and sit down I ask God, God, is it my fault to be who I am? Because people normally complain that I'm working like a woman, I'm doing like a woman, so I'm not supposed to be in the midst of woman being, I'm supposed to be somewhere else, you know? Because my mom family used to call it Ogbanji, like a spiritual spirit. Spirit child. Yeah, spirit child, that this is not a woman, this is not something that is supposed to be looking at you, it's supposed to, you know, take it to a spiritual places. So my mom tried so much for me to shame, but she couldn't. Yeah, just she who you couldn't. are. So I, yeah, I live so terrible <coughs> life in my lifestyle. So in 2008, I was caught with my boyfriend. So everybody was like, look at him, allergy son, allergy son, homosexual, because they used to call it homosexual in Nigeria or gay. So look at him, allergy son. So I was beaten, bullying. I was stripped me naked in my street. I was like, ah, well, please, I'm going to die. But unfortunately, like someone does know me that, no, 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 please don't kill him. Let's take him to his father's house because everybody knows, knows my father's an allergy. So when I got there, my father was like, ah, he couldn't say anything. He was just like, my son, he gay. Brought shame to the family. He brought shame to my to his family. I was like, oh, there's nothing I can do. So my father was like, he wanted to eat me with something. So my mom just blocked him. So please don't eat him. So I ran away. In 2008, I was even caught. If you check my body, I was. I think I have some scars <coughs> on my body. Just, so I ran away from 2008. So from there, I struggled from one place to another, living from one place to another. Because Nigeria, if you are living in a low life, maybe. There is one place they used to call face me and face you. Yeah. And you are living there and they didn't see any woman with you or you didn't come with female. 
people start gathering, start talking about gossiping, you, gossiping. So many things about you. Oh, don't go close to that guy. He's a gay. The landlord can just come and say, Ah, guy, please, I cannot accommodate you again. You have to find somewhere else. So, so it's very hard for me to stay alone. So I jump from one place to another, one place to another, different to different state to another. If I find myself here, just to be able to, just to be able to be who I am, you know. So it's very difficult, very difficult. What a story! Yeah. What a story coming from Nigeria. Yeah. It's nice having you, folks here, and I hope um, when next we call upon you guys, you definitely turn up oh. and share more inspiring <laughs> yeah, sure. stories. Absolutely. Thank you so much for such an amazing platform. Yeah. You know, stories are powerful, and and I think that that's what connects all of us humans together. You're our right. Stories. You're right. Um, very multi-layered, but very. Um, it, it, it's always, you know, like when he was saying, I'm like, oh my God, all of my, you know, experiences as the same person yeah. is, you know, different, but yet we somehow share the same pain, you know, of course. because you're not free to be yourself. But again, he's, he's more, you know, um, he tells a different story and I really, um, I feel so bad. And it kind of like, his, his stories like his um, reminds me of why, you know, we must, you know, continue to push because there's so many stories there's so like many, yeah, yeah. like mine. You're right. You know, and again, even you know, being in a certain class, it can only protect. We've seen people commit suicide. You know, they were everything seems fine, and again, I could relate to that because I've, like I said, I've been in a dark place. Um, you know, trying to end it all because again, you you were raised in Christianity, this thing, and you know, you've seen everyone. It's always the heteronormative. Yeah. Um, everyone is getting married to a woman. You go to this wedding. It's you know. <laughs> It's boy meet girl all the time. Yeah. When is it gonna be? You know, am I alone? You know. Um. So yeah. Um. Yeah. And you have to realize also uh, the part religion has played in that part of Africa. Yeah. yeah. They've used religion to manipulate, manipulate everything. Everyone yeah, and uh, it's not uh, the LGBT family that brought down Sodom and Gomorrah. No. Yeah. And when you read further in the Bible, there are so many instances. So many things, yeah. Yeah. You I mean, understand? I mean, we don't you know? want to go in there, but we think we can all well, agree that of course. it's very hypocritical. That's called religion, <laughs> you know. So, Joel, uh -huh. from what you have said, is it correct for me to deduce that if you are gay or lesbian mm -hmm. and you have um, the system when I say the system, if you are from maybe a very rich family mm -hmm. or you have an influential parent, mm -hmm. you are able to do, you are able to do things like yeah. organizing the pride, which you did in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Are you protected? Is um, that what you're trying to say? I think my privilege played a huge role okay. in getting into the National Assembly and getting into, you know, the Senate and going all the way to the fourth floor and, you know, doing all of that because it's a familiar territory okay. and people knew, oh, it's Joel, okay, um, you know, um, so, and it, it plays not just in the, you know, LGBT theme or human rights theme, it, it plays across, you know, when you are of a certain class, you you will be protected, chances are you will be, you know, um, sheltered, yeah. so that was, you know, the case for me and even um, my influence went into, you know, um, the, what's it called, the Asso Rock or yeah. Asso Villa. But the only reason we didn't go there was considering who would let us in and their records. Because All right. they're very huge records. So they would trace it back to, oh, it was this person. So that would jeopardize their, you know, job. All right. um, so that's the only reason why we didn't go there. Okay. Because we were supposed to. Thanks for sharing, uh, for shedding light on that. Now, let's digress away from that a little bit. During this coronavirus uh, pandemic, it brought lots of challenges. How did you cope during the lockdown? Wow. I, I can say I feel happy, but he, how, how I put it? I face a lot of challenges because this COVID-19 make me make me how i put the english make me so down okay. uh, make me so down you know sometimes 
staying alone is very hard. You know, so I used to think about what happened to me in Nigeria, what I passed through in Nigeria. But since I came across Opal, out and proud, we used to do Zoom meetings. So it makes me so happy that, no, I'm not in Nigeria anymore. I'm in UK. So I'm where I am now. I'm seeing a lot of LGBT people. So it makes me really happy. That's good. Read happy. So thank you, thank you for Opal and the Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, um, are you Joel? I couldn't agree more. It was cathartic, and you know, knowing we had nonprofits like Opal and coming full swing to rescue you know us out of you know depression and the sunken place and you know all of that. Because I'd say the whole world was in limbo. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Can I agree more? Um, I have a question. Um, guys. This track by Sam Smith and featuring Bona Boy. Um, Sam Smith, as you know, is non binary. And um, is, a, is it a welcome development? Or, like some are saying, the music, the LGBT worship boycott the music? Because, as you know, um, in Nigeria, the elites are, there are a lot of elites that are. Of course, yeah. Of gay, course, of course. Yeah, a lot. But up there, it's yeah. not. It's not in the. It's, they're yeah. all in the closet. What's your opinion? Um, I'm quite torn. I want to see things from a lot of perspective. Um, from anyone who's angry, I know why it's kind of like hypocritical. Like having, you know, um, someone who I, I'm not too sure about Sam Smith if he's, um, I mean Bonner, if he supports, you know, the LGBT movement, especially from you know, our side of the divide, yeah. Nigeria um, or Africa. But seeing him, you know, collaborate, you know, seeing towards Collide is a beautiful thing. It's a welcome development, you know, non-binary versus, you know, um, straight, straight, you know, unite. Collaborating. Um, so, um, I mean, you know what? A lot of voices should, you know, whatever you feel, I think it's, it's valid. If you feel angry, if you feel happy, if you feel somewhere like me, torn and happy sometimes and questioning other times, it's fine. Um, yeah. I don't know what to say, but I understand that most of this thing is called music business, um, yeah. showbiz. So that's where I question, is it for the money and the, you know, um, clout? Because a lot of people are talking about this right now. And I think what, you know what they say, you know, any publicity is, you it's know, good publicity. it's good publicity, especially from the point of show business. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, and then again, Sam Smith, um, I mean, I love them, but if you have a platform, use it to you know because the world is so very very um it's so small global it's a, village. It's a global village right yeah. now i mean we have internet never has you know any generation be, has been you know connected as us yeah um you know so why not speak about issues on you know what's happening here in nigeria calling out our i mean we have national assembly on you know line you can create you know a petition you can do whatever and support your brothers across the pond and sisters across the pond so you see um but Music again is a powerful tool. So it is. Um, yeah, it's a powerful tool. So they can, you know, do something within the music and speak on stuff. So, I mean, however you do it, though, you could you could never go wrong. But there are some approach to you know things. Don't take advantage of you know um, a certain um, demographic. Don't yeah, a certain people or a certain class or a social group. Um, don't just don't. It's not right because we've been through it. Do we need? people like our superstars mm -hmm. to step in towards repealing mm -hmm. this anti-gay anti -gay, um, mm. relationship on one in hand, Nigeria? On one hand, I would say yes, and on the other side of me, I would say no. You know why? Yes, you are a celebrity, you have a platform, but these people, I understand, I don't want to place too much on anybody. I am a nobody, if you ask me, but I did, you know, um, pride and it was successful. Anyone can do it. Look at our history. Masha P. Johnson, Rivera and all of these people. They were, you know, everyday people. Mm. They were quite peculiar people, the um, outcast and, you know, all of that. They were the ones who came together and said, you know what? And look at history, all of history. People who have done amazing things, they are everyday people. Yeah. So you don't wait for nobody to, you know, oh, you have a platform. Yeah, it's good if they, if they do, but more often than not, it's not the case. They have an 
image to protect and I can understand um, I don't want to bully you into doing what you're not comfortable with or you don't even necessarily agree with so it's up to us I mean now who wears shoe now I know where they pin up right on. good so um <laughs> you know what Love is that. good for you you know mm. what pains you and like i said what where am i driving for pain passion love you know all of these things mixed together it's very mixed back and you will always produce something remarkable when you channel your pain your anger and all of your um you know experiences into something positive that's good so, yeah what do you think what's yeah. your opinion my opinion is that i'm not against for the music i love bonabo i love Sam Smith, but in Nigeria, because you know Nigeria, they after like a, how I put it, a culture, a tradition. I know some people will be against it. I know some people will be calling Bonner boys, you know, sort of names, this that. So, and for Sam Smith, I think is a is a beginning, and you know, to to unite with LGBT because we are all one. We all come from one one blood, we are all one source, blood. Yeah. yeah, so, but Nigeria, because Nigeria still have a long way to go, because due to, oh, my culture, my tradition, Why it's forbidden, these are so, I think we still have a long way to go. I just want, yeah. I just remember one thing, not to undermine our own experience, not to undermine um, who we are, but, um, you know, Sam Smith is known for something, which is kind of like, um, a universal language, you know, music, and he makes music that, you know, a lot of people um, accept and yeah. love. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, and please don't quote me, you know, don't take it wrongly, what I'm trying to say is just because you're LGBT does not mean that's all there is to you. Sam Smith is known for maybe his music. What are you known for? And it's not fair, even this statement is not fair. You just want to be, why must I be a writer? Why must I be an actor or, you know, a singer to be accepted? But there's one more, if there's anything I know as humans generally, we're always more. Look into yourself and bring out that thing that makes you you, that we want to see. Um, it could be makeup, it could be anything. Anything that makes us happy. Anything. Yeah. And be so good at that thing, you, they cannot ignore you. I know it's not fair. I mean, people just want to be people. I just want to be me. Why must I be more? But, you know, soul searching. There's more to, you know, this entity that is Joel. There's mm. more, there's more. So um, there's the writer, there's the activist, there's the one who's very passionate about different causes, yeah. it's possessed me. There's um, the talker, there's someone who laughs. You know, there's always more to search for yourself and do something remarkable and do it whilst we're here because we're only here for so long. You're so right. Everyone mm. have that moment where, you know, goodbye, peace out, you know. Um, so do something remarkable and have fun whilst that's it. You don't have to be, I, um, you know, all LGBT uh, uh, or... Yeah. And, I, and someone once said, oh, um, this happened to you because you're, you're, you're gay, right? But I'm like, just because I'm um, LGBT does not mean I have to be reduced to only that. I don't call you, you know, straight and all I see is someone who likes women, women, women. No, I see you as a, a human, human being, being mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah. We, we, surely we'll get to that yeah, level. I hope I don't yeah. offend you. No, <laughs> it's all right. Thank you very much, guys, for coming to our program. We've got followers, viewers, all across Europe, United Kingdom and Africa. They are watching right now. What message do you have for our viewers? Look into the camera and tell them what your message is. Okay. Any Temi, any more Yoruba, any more Africa. Advice Temi for you to pay Emma Shora and Emma Shijura in law to be LGBT. It's not allowed, because allowed in African country. So, mother wish Bogboini good luck. So, I live one love. We exist. Ashikupo. Joel. Yeah. What message do you have for our viewers, please? In a the certain ca language. The camera is yours. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll try the Pidgin language. Pidgin. Um, so, I beg to our viewers when they're out there, make Kuna love each other. We exist, the LGBT plus community. The whole world is not, you know, um, heterosexual so i beg make one try accept you know um your brothers your sisters your friend we all day in the same boat of humanity one love not the message okay we exist know your history we've been there from time immemorial all right one love
Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> You've heard from Adewale and Joel. We exist in different shades and forms. Accept us for who we are. Keep watching Art and Proud African LGBTI YouTube channel. Watch, share, comment, subscribe. and subscribe. Thank you very much. One love.